everyone. Welcome back to RTS and welcome back to our four for four series. Yes, a bonus video. And not only is it a bonus video, it's a bonus bonus video. <laughs> yes, and you'll see what I mean in a minute because when someone gives me a challenge, oh, that gets me excited. Okay, so what we did in our four for four series so far is we did four layouts and we did four cards ready to send. How wonderful is that? I mean, talk about fast cards. And honestly, we started with four pieces of paper, four pieces of paper, and I still have scraps left over. Okay. That is the beauty of it. I mean, honestly, sometimes we sit and we think that we need 83 pieces of paper and 26 packs of embellishments to do a page, but we really don't, but it's fun to have options. Got to have options. Okay. So what we're going to do is we're just going to keep playing in this four for four series because you know I'm always changing things up so I'm gonna keep these to the side so after I did those four layouts and those four cards and this was my leftovers from my four for four series kit and so this is what I had left over from my layouts you can see this was my pattern one two three pattern four I don't think I have too much left over which is kind of good for me because it wasn't it wasn't my favorite but this is what I have left over. I had a tiny little bit. This is what I had left over from my cards. But I may stick that in there. You never know. We could punch a small little shape. But these I'm simply going to throw in the trash. Okay. But that is what I had left over from my cards and my layouts. And so along with that, I had my matting leftovers and my buffer sheet, my, my bonus sheet. Okay. I didn't, if you see that's a 12 by 12 size. I did not use it. And then of course this ivory here was what I used for the filming. So it's already out. So what I'm simply going to do is I'm going to do a one page layout. Okay. Now what I'm going to do is a photo that I've had for a couple years. And I just realized I don't have a date on that. So I'm going to go get a date. And it's something that was in my daughter's um, dorm. Well, they don't say dorms anymore. Suites, you know, in uh, in her apartment type thing. And it was something that the, the floor did. And it was like, what are you thankful for? And so I'm going to title this I Spy because... Uh, my daughter sent me this picture and I knew exactly what her writing was and I knew exactly what she wrote. And of course, I'll tell you what she wrote in a minute, but love that. And so that's what I'm going to call that. I'm going to call it I Spy and I'm absolutely going to use my leftovers from my 4 for 4 series. So that means I will have made five layouts. Oh, yes. I mean, five layouts. Okay. So this is fun to do. It's always a little, it's fun to do something extra. Okay. Oh, we already have the leftovers. I already had that 12 by 12. And then also my lovely subscribers challenged me to do this. Okay. So that's what I'm going to do. Now, what am I going to do for a sketch? Because, you know, I always have my photos, my sketch, and my papers, and that's what I do. And I think what I'm going to do, oh, I don't know. I have two pieces of inspiration here, and they stuck out at me. And so one is from Scrapbook and Cards Today, and it's a, a recent, uh, from their recent magazine. I'll have that link below. And I like this. I really like this. Okay. I like the way it is, probably because it's horizontal. I like that. For a two-page spread. Or I might also go with this and do a little bit of cutting things down and I'm, I'm not looking at photos and I'm not looking at sizes I'm looking at the background and I see these background blocks and I think uh, and this is from scrapbook generations I'll have the link below this was a free sketch July 2016 and I'll have the link below and I think I'm going to use that as my background for my one page and I think I'm going to use this as my background uh, for something else okay so that I think that's what I'm going to do okay so what will I use for supplies? I will absolutely use everything I had that's already laying here to my left and to my right, which is my washi and my border stickers and my ribbon. And then of course I had my embellishments because I just got done playing with my cards. So any of these are going to fit because again, I'm working with fall papers and also my photo is for fall. So you, anything, absolutely anything I pick. <laughs> will be fine okay so I'm not even stressing over that I got everything ready and this will be a fast page and you know what maybe what I'll do is I'll time that I will and of course you know I have my lovely photo corners and then my wood veneer that was my texture and then of course my braids I have them already here too so the only thing I'm going to add to my four for four series kit because I believe in doing a page to record the story, not to just do a page. So I'm definitely going to pull in this uh, big maple 
fall leaf only because of my photo because that's the whole that's the whole story right so that is something that tells my story and then I also had an embellishment kit that I had for my counterfeit kit and I'll have that video linked below and it was also a fall kit so another challenge I got from my lovely subscribers was to show some frames on a layout so that is why I pulled that for another challenge and so that's probably what I'm gonna do probably gonna marry those together yes yes Let's see what we come up with. And of course, you know, we got some leaves. I might not even have to use the punch. But you never know what we're going to come up with. So that will be my, my layout. And I will come back with a finished layout. And then, huh. I think I'll just make this for a two for one. So when I come back with a finished layout, I'm going to come back with another finished layout. And what would that be? Okay, so let's slide. <laughs> let's do the electric slide. Let's keep on going. Okay. So one of my uh, beautiful subscribers, uh, Tracy and her mom, Cynthia. Well, Cynthia, bless her heart, <laughs> she challenged me to do a two page layout with the leftovers that I showed from class, which was the six by six papers okay let me move this just for a minute so we can get because this is for you cynthia okay one of my loyal lovely subscribers tracy and her mom cynthia okay so uh tracy said mom says she challenges you to take those scraps and those six by six papers that you showed in class and she is challenging you to do a two page spread so okay so I think I can wing this because I do have some that's in 12 inches and Tracy knows I'm a horizontal gal. Okay. I really think I can wing this. Okay. I have some multi-color, but you know, we'll come up with something because I don't have to use all of those. Okay. Since Cynthia didn't say I had to use them all. She said, how we pull them out, do a two page spread. Okay. And so that's what I'm going to do because in the class for the 4 for 4 series, I had showed this as an option, but I did not use it on my layouts because the class really is about using four pieces of paper and a buffer and to see how far it goes. But I wanted to show this for an option because, you know, you always need a little something. Okay. And so I have seven photos printed in four by six size. So not only am I going to do a two page spread, but I'm also going to use four by six photos because I know everybody likes four by six photos on a two page spread. So that's what we're going to do. Okay. And this was a fall festival we went to. So again, everything I have to my left and everything I have to my right will all work. Okay. So Cynthia, this is for you. Okay. So what I will do is I will come back with a bonus layout from our 4 for 4 series and the challenge that my subscribers gave me to use these leftovers because you can do the exact same thing. Whether you have leftovers from your cards or your layouts or both and then also too if you had also pulled scraps and I know some of you did and I know some of you pulled 6 by 6 papers okay so just put them all in one pile and just keep on playing and let's see what we come up with okay and so that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to come back with a finished one page layout with my leftovers and I'm going to come back with a two page spread with the class uh, leftovers, you know, for what the options, the class options. I'm going to come back using those because I already had them pulled for the class. Okay. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to just play and I have some sketches here. I got my paper. I have my photos <laughs> and I have everything I possibly could need. Yes. I have my alphas. I have ribbon. <laughs> I have still have these border stickers. Okay, so let's see what we come up with. Okay, and don't forget my hexagon punch I had. I had my scalloped edge punch, and I even had my embossing folder. So, you know, if I keep these out, maybe I'll play with them again. So I will come back with a finished layout and a finished two-page layout. <laughs> yes, so hang on. We're going to keep on playing in our 4 for 4 series. So hang on. I'm going to get busy. Okay, thanks for the challenge, ladies. I will see what I can come up with. Hang on. Okay, so I am back uh, with my one-page layout completed. And so I did time myself, and it was 42 minutes from start to finish. Now, I do have some journaling I need to put on there, but I'll talk about that in just a minute. So what I did was I took my scraps, and of course, here's my other piece of my bonus sheet, and I wanted knew, I knew I wanted to get the pattern on there, and I had some squares of patterns, one, two, and three. And so what I did simply was, with my pattern uh, number three that was the orange, it was basically already in this size. It was like three and a half 
fourth by three and a half. And so I just cut my other ones to that exact same size and the same way with some of this bonus sheet, okay? And that's how I got my six blocks, yes. Because this brown graph is that bonus sheet that I didn't even touch during the layout. So that worked out very well, okay? And that's all I did. So these are basically three and a half by three and a half building blocks. And so I put that in a grid fashion. And then I had some strips up here that was basically that one half by 12 inch strip. And I just used that. You could use border stickers or you could use ribbon or washi, however you wanted to do that. And then down here, I still wanted to get that floral in because I think this is what I have left of that number one. I still have a piece left. That one 12 by 12 piece of paper landed on how many layouts and how many cards? Amazing. Amazing. That's a good way to stretch that 99 cents piece of paper. And so I just used my hexagon punch here, created a couple fishtails uh, to make this ban banner to give um, my photo a grounding base. And that's what I needed. And so then up here on these strips, I simply took another piece of that leftover sticker I had from my other layout and I did some embossing and used my punch. So, of course, the punch I was using was this, I call it a maple, but I think it's more like an oak leaf. And so what I did was I punched that with some of my matting scraps, and that was this craft, okay? And then what I did was I ran that through my embossing folder. And so when you're using a punched shape with an embossing folder, I find that it's easier if you take your punch, punch your shapes. I have these here. And then you run them through your embossing folder. Because what I find is if you took like a square and you emboss it and then you try to use your punch, sometimes the weight of your punch when you're pushing it will smash some of your texture on your embossing folder. So I like to do my punch shapes first and then I just take my shapes and I just put them in here sporadically and you can see this is already done and then I just run it through my uh, big kick so that's what I do so I do my shapes I punch my shapes first and then I run them through my embossing folder and that's what it looks like very very pretty yes love that and so I just added one of them up there along with one of my wood, wood veneer to get some texture in and then one of those glitter leaves because that's basically what this is about is my daughter writing on this tree in her uh, dorm as to what she was thankful for and of course I spied it right away which is why I have the title I spy right up there she wrote my mom and I thought oh Yes, that's my little girl, yes. And so what I did was also the challenge was to use some frames on a layout. So I added these additional three uh, uh, chipboard frames. They're from Simple Stories. And I basically just put them in a visual triangle and I just did it in a way to um, give me some visual triangles. And if you look here, I purposely put them, I put the purposely put the red here and I put the yellow here and the brown here to give me a visual triangle with some of these colors. You can just tell, especially with this yellow. So you have the border sticker, I have the frame, and I have the uh, thickers that say I spy. That creates a visual triangle. So that's why I placed them in the way I did to give me some visual triangles. Yes, absolutely. And then also I just added a few more elements down here on this grinding piece, which was my number one, I had this little, little strip of green. And I, again, I wanted to create a visual triangle with that green. So I just added a little, little sliver there. And that is a quick and a simple way to get a visual triangle in is just adding a sliver or a shape of something. It doesn't have to be an actual embellishment. It could be anything. And so then I took a chipboard piece and a little heart and an, um, a wood veneer no, I'm sorry, wood grain enamel dot. And as you can see, I only have three of them on there. But again, creates a visual triangle. Love that. Got to bray it in. Absolutely. Okay. And then because this is something I wanted to point out in the photo, I took a wood veneer that has a heart on it and I put it right there by the leaf that my daughter had wrote, wrote on. Isn't that something how you can just pick out your kid's <laughs> artwork or uh, handwriting in an instant? Love that. Okay. So now where will my journaling go? My journaling is going to go here right over these two blocks. And I will say when you're doing a grid layout, which we'll be talking more about that in our go-to designs coming up in just a couple weeks. Yes, very excited about that. And my journaling will cross over these two blocks because when you're doing a grid layout, one way to keep it all connected and look cohesive is to take some of your elements and overlap your grids. And so that's what I did. And so my journaling is gonna go here, basically about those three strips and that's where it's gonna go. And I probably will do it in the strips because sometimes I have to challenge myself. I don't really like that look sometimes, but 
I think it'll look good on this grid. So that's what I'm going to do. I have three lines of journaling that's going to go there. Because I really don't have a lot to say. It's just that I could simply pick out what my little girl wrote. And of course what she's thankful for. How sweet is that? And that is how simple this page came together. Yes. And so if you can see, uh, play I Spy yourself. See if you can I Spy any visual triangles and let me know. Because there's, there's a couple on there. Okay. So that is the one photo layout using scraps from my actual layouts and cards. Okay, so now I do still have, I do still have some leftovers, okay? Now when I get to the end of this video, and I will show my other layout that I'm going to do, I will show you what I will honestly do with all of these leftovers, because there's something you can do still, <laughs> with these leftovers, okay? So we're gonna keep on playing. We're gonna keep on trucking through this four for four series. Okay, so now what is up next? Okay, love that. That was all just scraps and added some frames, yes. Thank you for the challenge, ladies. I'm happy that this is documented. Okay, so now the next layout that I got the challenge for from Cynthia was to do a two page layout using those the options for scraps and six by six papers from the class. And so that's what I'm going to work on next. And I have this sketch here because uh, sometimes I need a little springboard, a jumping off point. And uh, I thought I definitely had some 12 inch pieces and I could just do some at the top, just like in this layout. And this layout is by Megan Andrew. Okay. And I thought, oh, that would be very quick. Four by six photos, bing, bang, boom, you're done. So I thought what I would do to start off before I start playing you know, we're just having fun, right? I thought what I would do is show a couple quick ways, and I mean quick ways, <laughs> when you have some leftovers or you have some 6x6, six six, because, you know, we've recently just organized our 6x6 six six pads. I'm going to show you a couple quick ways to get some 4x6 photos on a two-page spread using 6x6 six six papers, okay? So let's get cracking. Now, these, um, th these ideas I'm going to show is basically what you'll see in if you've ever taken six by six classes or sketch classes or anything like that, and when you're talking six by six, uh, on a two page spread, this is basically the go to design. Okay. When you're doing six by six. Okay. So I have my photos here. So, um, let me put this to the side. So of course I have seven photos here, but if you want to do a very, very quick, and I'm hoping I can get most of this in frame, but you get the idea. And I'll come back with my finished layout, of course. But I just wanted to show a couple ideas because we're playing. Okay, so if you have six, four by six photos, you know what you simply could do is you're going to span them across. I mean, it does not get any easier than that. No, it, it just doesn't. I mean, that's right there. You don't have to do any editing, no cutting down, no wallets, no nothing. Six, four by six photos, okay, and spans the whole way across, okay? That's the beginning of your two page spread. So if you're working with six by six papers, which is what I'm going to do because that's what my challenge was from Cynthia. You want to see a couple quick ways? Yes. Okay. And I had four six by six papers in the class notes because I wanted to show that if there was just a certain piece of paper you didn't have in a 12 by 12 size, just take six, oh, I'm sorry, four six by six papers and you know that creates a 12 by 12 page, right? Absolutely. Okay. So what we're going to do if you want a quick, and I'm talking quick. Okay, so what I wanted to show was a simple, simple, quick, quick way to do a two-page spread with six by six papers. And, and like I said, if you've done any six by six classes or challenges or sketches, I'm sure you have seen this because it is the go-to when you're working with six by six papers. And I've had some subscribers ask me, so what do you do? Well, you got your six photos spanned across, bing, bang, boom, you're done. And then you take, simply, you take four six by six papers and you line them at the top and there you go. Now, of course, you know, I'm going to have to cut off some headers, but that is your page design right there. I mean, <laughs> no matting, no nothing because your six by six papers are going to line up with your background and then your six, four by six photos are going to line up. And that is how quick you do a two page spread. And then what you can do is come over here with a title, come over here with a journaling. You could do a cluster in the middle and you're done. Okay. It is just that simple. And this is a good way when you're doing travel albums or you're having trips, or if you have a big holiday and you have a lot of photos, this is a quick way to do it. I think this is even quicker than using divided page protectors. Yes. <laughs> Look how quick. And then you got four patterns on there. Now, when you're doing your layout of your four, six by six papers, pay attention to your your scale and pay attention to the weight of your color because I would love to have this green and orange together but look 
my patterns as basically a gingham and a plaid too close together and the scale is too close together so I'd have to divvy it up okay so that's how I did that okay and so then I'll talk more about distribute distribute distributing color distribution of color that's the word when I actually get to my layout I'll talk about that and so then what is another quick way because remember I said I had printed seven so how would I do if I wanted to do seven I didn't want to I didn't want to do away with one so what you could do is again you could use those six by six papers now of course you know with my leftovers I still had some 12 inch so if this wasn't a green I definitely could cut this in half and put half here and half there and that very very pretty I may do that I know, but you know, I have washi and I have border stickers. So, well, let's just get that. We can just keep playing. <laughs> you see what I'm saying? You can just keep playing. And I don't know if all of that matches, but I had these border stickers here. And so I could definitely just keep playing. You see what I'm saying? I mean, that is just how simple, simple, simple. Love that. Okay. And like I said, you probably have seen that design if you've taken any six by six classes, because it is the go-to with six by six papers because you're using them in the six by six size. Absolutely. And you're getting four patterns on there. You can't beat that. Okay. So now let's say I have these three photos here and we're just playing because that's what the four for four series was all about playing with different designs. So I wanted to keep on going. You know, someone asked me a question. I'm going to keep on talking. Okay. So then of course I had four, uh, you know, I had seven. So how would I get that in there if I didn't span them across? So basically what you would do is that you could come here and then you would simply look at that look at that now I would want that distri distri distribution of this orange spread out through my layout okay and so but I'll talk more about that later so that is how you could do that you do the same thing but you're changing the orientation of your photos I have three four by six here and then I'm doing a grid basically of these four four by six and then that's spanning across and then you're taking your your six by six papers now you definitely could cut them down but why would you it would be so easy just to put them like that you don't have to worry about any gapping no holes there's seven photos on a two-page spread. So, Cynthia, I hope that gave you some ideas about using those six-by-six six papers. And then there, whatever you do on the left, you do not have to do it on the right. There is no one who says everything has to be matchy-matchy. So, if I wanted to use all seven of those, I may simply do that. Because this was a festival where I took a lot of photos. But sometimes when I want to do a page, I'll just pull out some key uh, main highlights of that festival instead of doing everything. And that's that was the highlight of this festival. Yes, absolutely. Of course, I could eat some French fries or some bread <laughs> but right now. So, and I'll talk more about this in just uh, a minute when I do fin have the finished layout. But I wanted to show that. And again, you could take your border stickers. And of course, these photos are going to come down here. I'm sorry. They're going to come down here. I mean, how quick is that? Right there was two pages. And all you're going to do is start adhering and you're done. That's it. Okay. And I had some more here. I could do, I have some green. Now, I do know that some of these are fancy pants, and so I know they're not going to meet up, so I would have to make a banner out of them. Okay, that's just something. And then you could just keep on layering with border stickers or even some of your 12 by 12 paper strips and just keep layering and, board, you know, just keep layering. And then, of course, you know, we have that washi. We could keep on going. Okay, and that washi and border stickers is good for covering up that seam where these papers and photos meet. That's really good for that. And then if you have any that's a little wonky, say this wasn't cut exactly at six by six, it would cover that up and no one would be the wiser. No. Okay. So I wanted to show that because I don't know how I'm going to finish mine, but I made, I think since I already have the seven photos printed, oh, that green looks good with that. Yes. Since I already have seven photos printed I may just finish with that or what I also could do is that I have a couple photos here on this on actually this side right here and I purposely put these three here because I would not want to cut anything off of these off of these three photos right here but these four photos right here you see there's a gentleman here that's actually whatever he's doing baking this bread or making it I could cut some of it off so say I could instead of making that a four by six I could actually make that a four by four 
okay and so then I pulled all my other photos that I could cut off a little and so this is a close-up so I could cut some of that off and I still get the image I could cut some of this off the bottom I still get that image and this gentleman that was making brooms I could cut some of that off and I would still get that image okay so I could do that okay so I'm not quite sure, but if you want a quick page, don't do any cutting of your photos. Use them in that 4 by 6 size. Don't cut any of your papers. Use them in that 6 by 6 size. And right there, look at that. Two pieces of paper, three photos, and that is your 12 by 12 landscape right there. That's You just dress up and start playing. Simple, simple. Okay, so that is probably a, a lot of talking, but that's what I wanted to show because I've gotten some questions. I got some challenges, and so you know 6 by 6 papers will be coming up because we just talked about that. And so I will come back with a finished two-page spread, and we'll see what I come up with. Okay, hang on. Okay, I am back with my finished two-page spread that I was challenged to do. So what I simply did was, as I showed earlier, is I put my two 6x6 six six papers on the top here on my left page, and I put my 4x6 photos down here across the bottom. And then on my right page, I took my 4x6 photos, made them into a grid collage, that type of thing, and I kept my 6x6 six six papers here on the right. And so that is my two-page spread. Yes. Now, what you see also is a mat. And how I did that was, as I simply took a piece of 12 by 12 backing that I didn't care for, a piece of paper I didn't like because you're not going to see it. And I put my two 6 by 6 papers up here, and then I put my three photos down here. And then once I had that all adhered, then I took uh, my trimmer and I cut just a fourth of an inch off on each side. Um, and then that gave me a mat of this mustard yellow because I wanted that because sometimes with so much photos and then big pieces of paper, you need that mat just to give it a little bit of interest. And so that's what I did. So over here on the left, all I simply did was title this festival because my subtitle is better together. And isn't it funny? Sometimes you'll look at a word and you look at a word and you look at a word and you think, is it spelled right? Is it spelled right? <laughs> because I keep looking at the word festival and I'm like, does that look like it's spelled right? So you know what I do on my smartphone? I just ask Siri how to spell a word and that's how I do a quick spell check. That's what I do. And so then I took a doily that I had got from a restaurant and I had layered some stickers on top of that and some epoxy stickers and some wood veneer and a burlap bow just made this a really big cluster and a title and a subtitle and then my journaling is going to go here on this embossed and I don't have it adhered yet in case I need something bigger but my in journaling is going to go on top of that embossed banner and I just took a, another piece of scrap and I ran it through my embossing folder and that's what I did and I got some of this more wood veneer because if you see over here I had the addition of blue for my embellishments because that's just what I had in my embellishments and I just added that addition of that blue so that turned out good and so basically then what I did to cover up that seam is I put some washi tape wood grain washi tape over top of that and then I took some more washi tape and I did a very thin scallop I put my washi tape on cardstock and then I ran it through my edge punch so I also get did my embossing and I also did my edge punch on this and then over here of course this took up takes up the majority of my page and this is two six by six squares underneath of this is what you would see the rest of it I didn't cut it down this yellow strip of what was left over from my scallop punch and I put that on top of wood grain washi and that's how I did that and down here I just added a few more embellishments to tie in with this big over here now you would notice here on this right page right here that this six by six block doesn't have anything on it because everything else is so busy you just need a place to rest so on this six by six block up here because the rest of this yellow is here it doesn't have anything on it and I'm absolutely gonna leave it that way yes and so that is how my two page spread came together very very quickly very quickly I had fun playing with this cluster up here and I have some close-ups at the end and then I just whatever I had over here I just simply repeated over here with some stickers and words and a pumpkin and this pumpkin was on a stick in my embellishment kit I just took it off the toothpick stick and I just use it as an embellishment and I put the date and it says 18 and so sometimes uh, I just asked got asked that question today why do I have sometimes this type of uh, like 18 or 17 or 16 or 15 on a photo and what I do is I put the last two digits of the year and I use that as an embellishment not only do you get the date on there because sometimes that's all you need is a year. I don't need the month and a day. And I use it as an embellishment. Okay. And so that is all I simply did. Very, very quick page. And I hope that gave some ideas. 
of how you could use those extra six by six papers and also to some scraps if you pulled and if you had leftovers from your layouts and cards because there is a two page spread and here is our bonus one page spread that the challenge was to use leftovers and also chip uh, these chipboard frames and we recently did a DIY about making your own chipboard frames I will have that linked below so we did that one page okay and then of course our other four our other four layouts can you I mean just look at that and then our four cards all of that from my four by four series kit I mean it just doesn't get any better than that love that okay so thanks for the challenge ladies we got some bonus layouts in now the only thing I wanted to say was two more things is that if you have more uh, scraps and you want to keep on playing you just keep on playing till you run out of paper because I still have these left over and I still have these left over from the what I had pulled for the class as far as scraps so I absolutely could get another layout but I'm I'm kind of done so I'm ready to move on and so what you can do if you you know take your bigger pieces and put in your scraps and which is what I'm going to do these bigger pieces they will absolutely go in my scrap folder okay now these little pieces what you can do you already have set your embossing folder out or a shape punch or an edge punch go ahead and just keep punching some out and I think what I'm going to do on this white because I am loving this embossing folder I think I will take this white put it into like maybe some three by four squares I run that through my embossing folder I already have that out get my hexagon punch punch some more of these and then just put them in my color bins that's exactly what I'll do okay now these other scraps here they'll just go in my scrap folder like that okay but whatever you have for left over you already have your punches out and you may have a, a big uh you know a theme punch or you may have a shape punch or an edge punch or an embossing folder keep playing with those tools and then reduce that number of scraps even more okay so just look at this four five six, seven layouts and four cards from that kit yes okay love that okay so the last thing i want to say is is that join us for a live event on monday the 29th at 8 p.m eastern the information will be listed below and the link will be below and we're going to have a little sneak peek and a little chit chat about our upcoming series our go-to designs and so that is sponsored by the scrap heavy membership and the scrap smarter session that alice has now just added to our scrap heavy membership so you don't have to be a member to join you can just join in on free and the links will be below if you have any questions just ask me again that is Monday evening at 8 p.m. okay how fun is that so that is all I have for today this is all I have for our bonus layouts and this is the end of our four for four series our fall round but that doesn't mean we're done with four for four no you know we're gonna do a Christmas round and I'm already thinking what we're gonna add for our extra embellishments this time so fun fun I hope you enjoyed your layouts I hope you enjoyed your carts and I hope you enjoyed this series I know I certainly did so thanks for joining in thanks for all the encouragement and thanks for sharing everything that you did I loved seeing what you ladies did and don't forget you can always share your progress and your projects on Instagram at RTS scrapbooking okay that's all I have for today come back to RTS because you never know what we're gonna learn bye